babe, you got your passport and you Sydney got... teenager Aza is about to say goodbye to her boyfriend, her family and her life of non-stop party. So you've definitely got everything? Yes, you've asked me like 50 times. Since Aza quit school, Mum Natalie has lost control in her own home. So she's decided to send Aza to live with new, strict parents. If Aza keeps on going down the path that she's going, I and many of her family actually have great fears of where she might end up. I'm going to be very manipulative when I want to be, and I think they can try and change me, but, yeah, good luck to them. I'm a party girl, I'm a raver, I love to go out and have fun. She drinks, she takes ecstasy. I usually do ecstasy about once or twice a week, and anyone who has a problem with it can. It's gotten to the point now, I suppose, I've just kind of almost given up. Did you even look for a job today? No, I will! <sighs> she had a job for about three weeks. She ended up not being able to basically go to work due to the fact she was hungover. It's a phone call, Liza. You've got to get used to it. Hey! I definitely think I should be able to do what I want to do without anyone sticking their nose in it. Currently, Asia is going out with a guy. My boyfriend lives here, pretty much. He goes home every now and then. Neither Asia or a boyfriend contribute to the household. They sit at home all day, every day. <laughs> but that's enough for you, Jeff. <laughs> I don't stay out very late because I've got to work, so I really don't know kind of what goes on when I'm in bed. Did you clean up out the back after that yes. party last night? There's two bottles, and you're making a deal out of that. The, the major change in Asia is um, being due to the drugs that she's been taking. She's been like, hospitalised three times from um, taking ecstasy. I got a phone call at five o'clock in the morning saying that Asia had been brought into um, the hospital unconscious. I felt a bit bad, but not really. I was like, well, I'm not dead, so... <laughs> My worst fear is waking up one morning and, you know, her not being here. Where would my life go without her? Aza will be travelling with 17-year-old Troy from Brisbane. Make sure you respect the other people, Troy, because it is their house. Troy's walked out on school, job interviews and even an apprenticeship. And his parents have all but given up. Troy does not take her authority very well. He thinks he knows everything. He's 17, he thinks he's a man of the world. He doesn't need anyone telling him what to do. The thing I like about cars is going real fast, smell of the burnt rubber. Likes to go to these places where all these young boys get together and they think that they're invincible. It's my life, I really do it. I live by my own rules, I go out whenever I want to, and you just can't really stop me from doing what I'm doing. I'm the one that wakes up when ambulances go by because I think, okay, someone's gonna knock on my damn door and tell me that my son's. What, dead. Do, we, what do you think we're doing? We're just going out like normal kids bloody do. As you get older, you're supposed to get smarter, but I think he's at the same stage as my little 13 year old daughter. He's going backwards. No, he's not a green. Going through school, Troy started throwing chairs or started yelling and screaming at this poor teacher. Are they following me? So Troy actually got expelled three months prior to Year 12 finishing. I was actually trying to get expelled. Huh? Now the other stage is he's starting to get into the alcohol and that's got us pretty worried. I got a mad idea, so it makes it look like I'm not even drinking. No one even knows that I'm drinking. I'm hoping he's never drink driving. I hope he never has. Um, but there's no guarantee with Troy. Someone's Where's the key so I can go for a little drive? He could be driving drunk and he could run over some innocent victim and he could be in jail for quite a few years. Don't drive any cars. Yes. No alcohol. Yes. Okay, you can go. You don't have to keep talking. See ya. Get out of here. Enjoy the journey, mate, all right? In less than 24 hours, our rebellious teens will have their worlds turned upside down. <laughs> Troy and Aza are being sent to the small American town of Zanesville, Ohio. For the next week, 
they'll be living with a deeply religious and conservative family. If you spare the rod, you spoil the child. Nathan is the pastor at his local church. His wife, Cassandra, is an opera singer and a music teacher. I tell my students, two L's I don't deal with, lazy and a liar. If you're both of them, either one, go study with someone else. To have five adult children, including 23-year-old Micah and a foster son, 18-year-old Brian. They know how to whip somebody in shape. Hello? It's just we ate. Get up and leave this mess. When we say it, well, they jump at it. Teamwork makes the dream work, people. In the seventh grade on, they had to do their laundry. Along with doing their laundry, they had to learn to cook, clean, iron. I'm nobody's name. Great posture. Older children have earned a dozen university degrees between them. This family believes a compulsory routine of study, church, and chores keeps kids out of trouble. Yes. No smoking, no drinking, no barring. No, no, I'm not dealing with that because you're in my care and you represent me, not you. Something tells me Troy and Aza have never experienced family life quite like this. When you blow it the first time, I don't trust you. And if I don't trust you, then there's going to be limitations everywhere. You're not going to be a raunchy teenager that I can't stand. That's not happening. This place is freaking weird as. Yeah. There's like no shops here at all, right? There's not even a wall. This is a weird town. Ohio has some of the toughest laws in America. This place even underage drinking can mean up to six months behind bars. Good morning. Hey. How are you? Hey, hey Troy. Troy and Nathan. <laughs> Nathan. Pleasure to meet you. Hey, Troy. Hey. How are you? It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice. Yeah, Whoa. Glad you're here. Cool. Yeah. It's good to have you. Hey, we have people for you to meet. Hey. I'm Brian. Aza. Nice to meet you, Aza. Hey, Brian. Troy. Nice to meet you, Troy. Mike. Aza. Nice to meet you, Troy. Troy. <laughs> well, we certainly welcome you here yeah, and so hope that you have a great stay. Well, it will be a great stay, so long as Troy and Aza can and stick to the house rules. We ask you to, to respect our home. There won't be any smoking here, and there won't be any drinking of any alcohol. If we keep you occupied enough, then your mind won't be on the other stuff. They're less than 10 minutes in, and already, Troy's searching for a way out. This plane did so I can't lock it. So Check the screen comes off. I think I did the screen. I'm not my sort of people. They're all because they won't let you drink, they won't let you have any fun. So it's going to be pretty bad. I will not tolerate smoking or drinking, talking back, disobedient. Not fun. I, I, I don't do that, and I'm not starting today. Guess we'll just have to make the best of it. Have some fun. Have my packet in my jacket, a packet in my bag. So here. Yeah. I've got them in different places so that if they find um, one, I've still got a little stash. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. I'll tell you what the chores are, and then you all make a plan and stick to it. OK, let's start writing. The first thing that needs to be done is day or dishes. And then bathrooms, where the toilet is. Oh, yeah. You want to work with me in the kitchen? Yeah. OK. But instead of mucking in with the chores, Troy plans to spend the afternoon boozing like he usually does. Troy volunteered really quick to do the bathroom duties. And he volunteered that bathroom so fast, that made me very suspicious. But maybe he did a great job. I'm hoping he did. If not, there's a chance to do it again. If I stay in here for a while, then she'll probably think that I was busy doing my work. What that? What's that? That's Rose. I was very suspicious of Troy. I said to myself, there's liquor in that. Now, you know, maybe he's just playing me for a fool, but we're going to find out who the fool really is. We'll see. It's the first day in Ohio for our Aussie teens. Last time I went to church was when I was 10, and it was pretty be able to do what I want to do. 
my lifestyle in Sydney is pretty much I go out all the time. Uh, like, I'm hardly ever home. My mum's sort of given up on me. I mean, I do pills like once a week. I smoke pot like all the time. Do the words bad influence spring to mind? <laughs> Aza's boyfriend appears to be a distant memory already. Back home, Cassandra's trying to get a confession out of Troy. Looking good. How many days have you ever gone without drinking? Two days. She suspects he's been drinking under her roof. And she's right. You didn't have a drink at all yesterday? No. So how are you going to manage today? Are you having any withdrawals or anything? Not yet. Maybe it'll come. Troy is a con. He plays games. I mean, I could do something dynamic right now. But what I'd like to see is him come forth. I wouldn't hold my breath on that one, Cassandra. As for Aza, her stay with her new strict family is getting better every day. The conversations with Brian have been good. I can't call. Mm -hmm. He's really nice. Um, like his personality. I'd like to get to know him better and stuff. He's good looking. But if Aza wants to get in good with Brian, she knows she'll have to get in good with Cassandra first. I'm about to give my cigarettes to Cassandra. I'm sort of being manipulative. <laughs> Which is fun. <laughs> Aza reckons a confession on the cigarettes may be just what she needs to win this family over. Do you like following these to me? Yeah, I don't. I would actually like to get Nine here. Aza one, Cassandra nil. Grab the cigarette. You think that's gonna be in you? That's yucky. That's horrible. Do I need, do I need to search your stuff to make sure this is... No, I got them all that. I... But in this family, you break the rules, you pay the consequences, whether you're fessed up or not. As much as I love you and as much as I'm so proud of you, there's a few consequences that we have to take care of. I thought it would be lovely if you cleaned my lazy Susan, and if you saw it, you'll know why. Aza has given me the cigarettes, and I do trust that that is all that she has. I trust with caution. Cassandra's right to be cautious. I hit some cigarettes, and she keeps asking me, are you sure you don't have any? Like, you're not lying to me. And I'm like, yes, I'm sure. <laughs> but I am lying. You're playing with fire if you mess with this mum, Aza. <laughs> Today, our Aussie teens will be feeding the poor in Zanesville's toughest neighbourhood. I think a lot of times it's happened with our generation. It's all about me. It's all about me. You know, well, what are you doing for someone else? It's just important to learn how to serve and not be so selfish and all about you. Gross. Tell me what to wear. They haven't even started work yet, and already Aza's off on the wrong foot. Cassandra's ordered her to cover up. I don't like it at all. I feel gross in this. I feel sticky and disgusting and... Ugh, I feel dirty. I said, cover those puppies up. The focus is not supposed to be on you. That's the point. The focus is supposed to be what you are doing. Would you like some applesauce? Uh, 20. Yeah. Sorry. I have to stand over the hot food. I feel like I'm going to pass out. Down for the sick thing. Yeah. I think it's a waste of time because taking time out of your own life when you could be doing other stuff, going out with your mates. He's see that. Troy, darling, you need to be up, baby. My legs are tired. Don't I'm make me come up. down. No one's then. here. I'll get up when someone comes in. No, you get up now. I'm sorry, I'll get up when someone comes in. No, you need to get up, dear. As soon as you're finished, we'll let you sit. Now you need to get up. Thank you. You can't sit on the food counter. Turn around, child. It's not about you. 
It's about what's going on. And people don't sit when they're serving online. OK. This is one of those incidents that just happened where you have to follow orders. What's the dance? You sitting. When you're in a public place, you're here working. She's pretty strict. She's pretty annoying. Now she's getting on my nerves. She thinks that she can get her way all the time. I don't think that's fair. I think if my legs are sore, I should be able to sit down. He's had enough. Everyone's strong there. So I'm getting pissed off tomorrow. Should be able to do what I want to do too. Have you seen Troy? Apparently, Troy has gone for a little walk. When I see him, it won't be pleasant. If Troy wants to find out what punishments are like, he's going the right way about it. Troy, come here. What's he got? Tell me that's not a beer. Uh, not really. See, a, a real mom, a real mom trusts. Does she? If you... I trusted you to that point. Now, why couldn't you say to me, I need to go outside and cool down, I'll be out on the bench? Because I was angry. I didn't want to speak to anyone. What I talk about is consequences. You can't just, you can't do this. Can't do this. Okay, let's go. I don't really care that she got pissed off at me because she might say that I'm her son for this whole week, but I'm not her kid, so she shouldn't have to worry about my life. He did it as a, a get back, you know, because that's what he does at home is he escapes. And that's what he does with his liquor. He escapes from everything. You still got to come back and face me. Cassandra thinks it's time that Troy learned the meaning of consequence. I have a chore for you. I need you to come with me. What sort of a chore is it? Not a nice one. And how come I've been given it? There are always consequences to when you do things. And this is just the beginning. It's a lack of respect in that he's working under our jurisdiction, our authority. And we expect him to cooperate in the manner in which uh, we tell him to. Troy's punishment is to clean up all the rubbish in the garage. And there's plenty of it. Get it done pronto. Man, I think that's loaded. My plan for the rest of the week is to keep sneaking behind Cassandra's back and um, living the fun life. Troy's struggling to fit in. Azer, on the other hand, is fitting in just a little too well. Well, there's a nice enough distance between them. Cassandra's concerned that love, or worse still, lust, huh. is starting to blossom between Azer and her foster son, Brian. Whatever you're doing in public, you're doing much more in private. So if I'm able to see what's happening when I'm out looking, don't allow their kids to date before they're officially adults. That looks Back nice. home, Aza's had serious boyfriends since she was 14. What's going on out here in the grass? We've just been sitting here talking. Just checking. So, um, as long as you're in my house, you know that um, there'll be no fraternizing. Yeah. No yeah. coming together of any kind. <laughs> right, as long as we're straight. Did they get the message? They better have. I told my children, I said, my husband and I went together for four years and we married virgins. You can wait. That's right, you can wait. But will they? <laughs> Halfway through their stay in Ohio... Thank you, Troy. And the I think it's time our Aussie teens learn a life lesson. They've brought them to the local juvenile centre. Come on in, I'll show you around. I wanted them to share their stories about their lives, because they'll have similar lives, but they're still allowed to be at home. Here, you don't get to have a bad night or a bad day or a bad moment. You do what you're told to do, or you go to jail. First of all, every kid here goes to school. Um, if you're not in school, you're in jail, one of the two. Most of our kids here are on probation, so they've done some kind of an act to right. get them in the court system, some type of a criminal act. We have one kid here who was drinking and driving, and that's why he was here. Drinking and driving. That's exactly the fear that keeps Troy's parents up at night. 
we've had kids stay here for five, six, seven years because they just refuse to follow the program. And you know what? If you refuse to follow the program, you'll be here until you follow it. But our rev head Troy is just not getting the message. I think it looks pretty easy. You want to stay? Hey, Solomon, can we do an intake? I can do an intake right now. Yeah, if you want to stay, I can sign you that bedroom right there. All right. <laughs> You kind of piss me off a little bit because you like it here. If a kid comes here and stays, once they're here, it's not their choice whether or not they go home. You understand that? It's always better at home. I haven't seen family, friends, nothing. It's always better at home. Back home, Troy's had more than one run in with the law. My question is, can you control your behavior? Um, I can control my behavior when I'm not drinking, so... Uh, it's like, it's pretty tough to not drink, but, can yeah. You, can you tell us why you drink? I usually drink to make myself happy. I, what makes I, you not happy? Just adults trying to tell me what to do, sort of stuff. You kind of made me angry because, because I know there are kids that benefit from being here, and kids like you, that sort of a smart mouth kid, it, it would make me very angry if you was here taking up space for someone who really needs to be here, and I can guarantee you would not have fun. First got me in trouble was like I was partying a lot and doing a bunch of drugs and I had taken my mom's vehicle and got into a little fender bender. I could have been seriously hurt. If you could do something over again, what would you do over it? Not take the car, not party. It got me into a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. Sort of scared me that I haven't been caught for most of the shit that I've done, but if I'd been caught, I'd just mainly about my drinking and um, what I'm gonna be doing with the rest of my life. Aza too is learning just how good she's got it at home. I ran away because um, my mom, I walked in and I saw my mom doing drugs. And so I just ran away and then I came here. I think Caitlin would love to be in your situation, to have a caring mom, mm. somebody who looks after her, and if she don't have that. You know, when with the drugs and alcohol, in my mind, I thought that would help me but it really doesn't. It makes things much worse. I'm learning now. I took so much for granted, and I really was just a terror to my mum. Definitely seeing that this is the road I could have been leading towards, it definitely makes me want to straighten out, and it just made me think, you know what? I don't want to end up here. I, I want to be at home with my family. But first, she's got some trust issues she needs to sort out with this family. If you have anything maybe you've forgotten about, maybe in your luggage. Her new strict mum suspects Aza's been hiding cigarettes. Half of the truth is still a whole lie. Her bid to get into Cassandra's good books could be about to backfire. So you pretty sure there are no extra lighters or stuff under the bed and... What is that? Oh, bless the Lord. <laughs> Betrayal is when you have one's trust and you betray the trust. Now, what Aza did, that was portrayal because she set up like it was all cool. Cassandra's lucky it's just the cigarettes she has to worry about. Her real mum loses sleep over Aza's drug taking. Dear Aza, this time of heart has given me a chance to reflect on last, the last year. I've always tried to treat you with respect for who you are and the life you want. But lately, you don't even seem to respect yourself. Each time I've received a phone call in the middle of the night, it has broken another piece of my heart. Please try to understand that drugs and you do not mix. As much as you say you don't want to harm yourself, as you know the effect it would have on me, you are harming yourself every time you take a pill. It is more than I can cope with sometimes when I see you lying in a hospital bed, not knowing if you'll wake up or die. I don't know why or when I lost your respect and love, but all I know is I need it back. Aza, I love you and I hope you never forget that. See you soon. Lots of love, Mum. I can definitely see the pain I've caused her. I could see the pain when I was causing it. I don't know why I didn't change back then. I just... I love my mum and... I know she loves me. I'm going to stop taking drugs, absolutely. I mean, I feel great without it. I feel great being me. I feel like me again, like I was 
13 again. I miss, I miss being me. Dear Troy, I hope a new journey has begun for you as the place that you are at right now is taking you backwards. <laughs> We both feel it is the time for you to grow up and take responsibility for your future. I have a strong belief that you will be the young man I have always known you will grow up to be. We both hope you will come back a better we person. We both hope you will come back a better person as we know the family you will stay with will guide you in the right direction as myself and Dad try to. I don't know how I would be able to go on. Miss you heaps. Lots of love, Mum and Dad. You right, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you do. I care about what my parents think about me. Probably haven't been the sort of person that I should have been. I feel pretty bad about all my drinking and think. My mum would have been pretty worried, hoping that the cops don't turn up to her door, saying that I've crashed the car, I've killed myself, or I've killed one of my mates. I never, I never used to think about loving my parents, but I love my parents, I reckon. Well, Troy, your chance for a fresh start begins right now. I need to talk to you. Cassandra's decided that now's the time to confront him about his boozing. So, I have smelled that can. Would you like to explain to me why I don't smell just orange pop in there? I was just waiting till you felt confident and trust. I mean, I could have lowered the boom the first time, but I, I, I didn't want to do that. How many bottles do you have? Ah, uh, just one. It's a pretty big bottle. It's a pretty big bottle. That's why it's just one. If I search your room now, will I only find one bottle? Yeah, well, there, there's a second bottle, but it's not actually mine. Okay. It was act it's actually is a gift, because I don't drink. It's like a girl's sort of drink. I'm glad to hear you come clean. You know, when you take control of you and it doesn't control you, you get to know you. And if you get to know yourself, you might even like you. He's got to understand a no is a no, a no, a no. Ooh, that's like it's a headache for my nose. I know, I think it's pretty sad waking up in the morning and needing a drink. You're all right, you know that? I'm so proud of you. Actually, you're amazing. Yep, our teens are finding out that good old-fashioned clean fun is not so bad after all. At the start of the week, I didn't, I wasn't getting on with everyone because I thought they were a bit weird. But I like uh, that they're different. They're different to my family, so I get to learn different stuff. And it's been a long time since I've had this sort of fun without any drinks. I'm pretty proud, actually, of Troy. I look for him to go back a changed fella. And I'm not sure that he came with the idea of changing. <laughs> and Aza, I've seen her continue just to be happy and joyful. <laughs> and of course, uh, Brian has had a lot to do with that too. <laughs> I think the two fell falling for each other. <laughs> McDonald's are uh, my family as well, so I feel at home with them. Yeah. With me and Brian, it was weird. It was like a one-off thing, like, we just started talking and we connected straight away. It's really been a good thing learning so much about her without, you know, moving too fast. It just makes it a whole lot more special. <laughs> That's right. Good old-fashioned clean fun.
Their week-long stay with strict parents is just about over. And today, our Aussie teens are heading home. I feel pretty sad about leaving. Um, yeah, this experience has been a life-changing experience. I feel better. My attitude has probably changed. It's taught me how to be a family member, to fit in with everyone. This has been an absolutely amazing experience for me. I've loved it so much. Tell me you love me. I'm a bit nervous about going home, mainly because of the fact that I know it's going to be hard to resist all my old temptations and, and there's just stuff I have to sort out with my boyfriend that I'm not particularly I'm excited about. To the me and Brian, I mean, we're going to keep in contact every day, obviously. Good. Thank you. Oh my goodness. They're leaving. Oh, this week has been phenomenal. Oh, I love you. To see changes in the lives of Troy and Aza, it's changed me. Troy, the man. But the hope and the joy that I have is that I've given them a good foundation to walk away with. They're not the same as they were when they came. I just want to say you guys are helping so much. And I really appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate you. Appreciate you, sweetheart. You take it easy when you get home, all right? One step at a time. <laughs> Saying a ride ride is hard, but I know I'll see him again. So I know I'll definitely see him again. I'm not holding my hopes up too high, but I am hoping that he does come back and uh, says I'm going to get a full-time job. I want to go somewhere in life and sees that mum and dad just want the best for him. I'm pretty nervous about seeing him. I haven't seen him in a week, so it's pretty awkward, I guess, walking in that door. After a week of strict parenting in Ohio, 17-year-old Troy is back in Brisbane and almost home to his own family. How's it going? He's mm -hmm. I'm a little sorry for him. Sort of making you worry. Yeah, I missed you. We saw He has matured a little bit, but we're going to have to see the actions. Um, what he can talk about and his actions are two different things. With Troy coming home, I just feel like my family's complete again. Coming home, I think a lot is going to change. I'm definitely going to help out more in the house, and I think me and Mum are going to get along a lot better. Uh, I'm nervous about seeing my boyfriend and talking to him about everything and just sort of saying to him that I need time to myself. Hello. Oh. Oh. Are you cold? Did <laughs> <laughs> you jump up? So did you have a good time? Yes. I had a great time. They're really good. Well, they have nice family, but they're strict. Yeah, they were really nice, but like strict. I found just strict scary. So I've quit everything and. <laughs> <laughs> That's Brian. Oh, okay. Brian. Brian. Definitely seen a change in her, I suppose. The biggest being the whole quit smoking scenario. But as much as I want to support her and help her in those in decisions that she's made, it still relies on her to kind of uh, follow through with them. Life is just going to be about me now and getting where I want to go and doing what I like doing without the drugs and without the alcohol and it feels great to be home.